Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. I'm The Gentleman and welcome to another episode of The Gentleman's Pixel Club. If you enjoy the videos we make, please consider a like, share and subscribe and you can follow me on Twitter on the handle shown. Any promotion you can do helps us go a long way and would be really appreciated. Today's episode has a title, it's called The Mister and The Mistress. This isn't a game review, this is a hardware review and it comes from www.8bitsforever.net that you can see on the screen. I brought this off my own money. So we're going to take this Amiga here and the piece of hardware that I have brought, we're going to be putting inside. But before that, we need a Mr. FPJ. And this is going to be my donor system. This system was built so I could travel the world for my job that I do, not quite the world, just generally go to Europe and back every once in a while. And COVID put an end to this and I was going to be using that in the hotels. But the mistress is the key part of this video and she is in this box. Mercy sealed, nicely arrived, remove my address for obvious reasons here. And we're going to open this up on fast forward. So these are the contents of the box. It looks like there's two pieces here. We've got a cardboard box underneath and we've got a bag on top. And in this bag are various components that we are going to be used to put the mistress board inside the Amiga. And the purpose of this board, for those who may not know what it is, if you haven't looked at the URL yet, is it basically allows you to use an Amiga shell to run a Mr. FPGA device. And it's a dedicated I.O. board to make everything really neat, tidy and absolutely perfect. The components that you get here, this is a 3D printed board to position a few bits and pieces that will be shown in the video. I believe it's made of PETG, which is a higher quality, harder plastic. That's a bit of paper. This is a USB cable. This is a bag of bits. And here is a component, again, printed onto a 3D board. If you look carefully at the larger board that's on the desk, you'll see a few screw holes in this. They've actually put the screws into it in the process of printing, so it's nice, firm, and it's nice and solid. You know, they've obviously used quality components for this part of the journey, and they want you to have the, the best experience ever. So 8-Bits Forever, you know, top marks for, I believe, the quality of printed material that you've used on a 3D printer. It's clear that you want sturdy, solid plastic that's definitely going to be needed in this. In this bag here is the magic of this all, and this is the mistress, and this is an I.O. board. You can see it all fully assembled. I expected this to come in multiple parts, but it didn't. They actually test these before they send out and assemble it. But there's a problem. The area that I've circled, something is broken, and you saw me take it out of the bag, and the picture there is a reset button that is snapped off on mine, and these are the parts that I later found in the bag. I was not impressed about this, you know, you spend a lot of money on these parts and to have something like that broken, not too good. Never mind, we can move on, we can fix this. So we're speeding through opening up the Amiga at the moment, you know, this is on fast forward. If you've never opened up an Amiga, this is essentially what you need to do. And the reason you would be perhaps doing this, if you had a broken Amiga in the loft or one that you didn't use anymore and you wanted to have a donor system to put your Mr. FPGA in while well, you could use the Amiga keyboard, and everything this is the process that you would take so we take about seven screws out the back and it should eventually pop open when we flip it round the top lifts off and you have a lot of shielding that's there so you've got the keyboard connector that plugs into the top central panel that's just been removed i'm slowly and carefully removing out removing the memory expansion board that's not going to be needed anymore. And we've simply got the floppy drive to get rid of now. And we've got the shielding to get rid of here. The shielding has a couple of screws on it that are being undone. And I take a moment to actually realize what the problem is because I'm stuck a little bit. It's not lifting up. And then I find that there's a couple of little hooks that you have. These, these are these little metal type latches that you bend up and you've got one on the right hand side of it one underneath where the floppy drive is and when they bend up that allows you to lift the shield in so there's me discovering that one there and i do the ones by the floppy drive now and the shielding comes up and this reveals the amiga system board with the floppy drive that we can very easily separate and take out we don't need any of these parts for what we're doing we have all the parts 
and we're doing I'm doing, doing a few screws on the back and with this it should basically set the Amiga essentially free when that floppy drive comes out so this is the mistress and this is what we are going to be putting into the Amiga here the top assembly has the fan assembly on it so you know that's going to need to come off as well that can't stay on there because the mister has to go underneath this because this is as I say just an IO board that sits on top so if we undo the four supporting screws that we've got here we will be able to remove that assembly nice and easy So assembly removed, we're bending back the power because that's going to plug into the Mr. FPGA as well. And we're taking off the various components that have actually been put onto the board for us. So I don't know the official name of what these connectors are, but we've taken off two connectors so far. And we've just taken off the third one, I believe we're just doing that now. And we will be ready to go to start putting the Mr. FPGA onto the board but first of all we need to do the Amiga case assembly so using the two printed parts you hold them together as I'm showing here and they will clip very very nicely into the back and this is where I learned how tough this plastic was where I think it's pet G you can see the screw on the bottom right hand side I have to force it forward and push it down so it eventually clicks into place and it is solid as a rock when it goes in it looks like it's going to break but it doesn't break because the material is pretty thick that they've used you know there is absolutely unlike the 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 broken part there is no complaints on this part and that is firmly in place you know i could wave this around till the cows came home and that is not going to be moving anywhere so we then take the daughter board here or the io board for the mr fpga and you know i'm just basically screwing in the support pillars at the moment so i push a screw underneath of the four holes and screw a support pillar in and you do that in four places and you're then in a position where you can put the mr fpga on top of that so these are the these are the female to female support pillars that are actually used here i also put a unitis on the board very quickly gone a couple of the black circles these are basically support brackets that go around underneath i'm just pointing to them there and we put the board on top of that and what we essentially do is we take a screw and we're going to hold the screw underneath the case of the Amiga push it through there as we're about to do in a moment where I've just pointed to and then you tighten it at the top so we're going to push the screw through now and you've got to do two of these both of these on the right hand side and then we get a little washer put the washer on and you have one effectively directly above the position that I'm currently doing as well. And you can see the washer there now. And you get a nut and you tighten that on. And that supports that particular board for you. So two of those need to be done. And on the left hand side, you've got two screws that simply screw in very, very nicely to the system. So this is the second one going into place now. It looks a little bit fiddly, it's not fiddly at all, and you can do this by hand. You know, the, the board is secure, the two screws to the left of it really, really do keep it in its place. So don't have a particular problem with any of the work that we're doing here. This is the Mr. FPJ that I've stripped down out of the case that I did off camera here. And you've got the female to female barrels, so this is going to effectively just sit directly on top of the exposed barrels that you've got here and the sd card what they've done is they've got this connector here that i'm plugging into where the sd card is and this is a fantastic creation it allows presentation of the sd card onto the back of the io board so you have easy access to it where the resets would be reset switch would be if you didn't have a broken one like me but we'll deal with that issue later on so this plugs directly into the 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 uh, io board very very carefully you've got to line that up it wasn't hard to do it's just tricky because you don't want to be bending any pins and you essentially insert that small adapter into the sd slot and push down onto the io board and then you can screw the four barrels in place i've just put the power in there to help secure it while i'm actually doing this but the four barrels will screw in place on top of the board so that there's a really good reason why i'm showing you all of this you could be saying hang on a minute you know, this is a review what what the hell are you doing 
This was absolutely appalling. This came with no instructions on how to do this. There, there was all I had for reference was a couple of pictures that I could find, you know, having a look on their site of how it was built, how it held together. Yes, you disassemble it yourself, but come on, guys, for the amount of money that's being spent here, a few instructions wouldn't go amiss and to put this back together you're basically just reversing everything that you already did so all the components just quite easily go on you can have a look on their website for a couple of pictures this video pauses as you go it should be fairly clear as to what goes where and i just wanted to show the build in progress so two things i am not happy about so far one the absolute piss poor packaging where part of my device was broken and that is a bad design you know you should not have a power switch that is sticking out the way that it is and we're just putting on this u-shaped connector here as well and this goes around the memory so a little bit of care is taken on the pins around there but you shouldn't have an exposed power switch like that why when you package this up could you not put a bit of polystyrene around it or anything else like that to find those bits broken when I took this out for the money that I spent on it. Guys, you know, you could fix this with, I don't know, one euro's worth of polystyrene. Please, for any further ones these ship out, you know, do that. Or maybe, if you have another version of this mistress, reconsider that design. I do not think that power button in that position on the edge of the board where it sticks out, where it's exposed, is great in any shape or form. I was fortunate because... I could get around this but you know some people may not have everything available to do this what i'm doing at the moment is i'm just pointing to the pins where this u-shaped connector goes so you basically have them on either side of the memory and it just slots down very very nicely while i'm building this i'm not nervous but i'm thinking you know is this actually going to work because i know that i've got a problem with the power switch you know how can i get around this what can i do to get around this do i actually have a problem here and we'll find out very shortly so at the moment we're plugging in the ethernet cable that feeds from the expansion board they've created and this is the hdmi cable that also feeds from the expansion board so that will plug in quite nicely there for those of you that are following along and in the, intently watching you know there should be one bit that we still really need to be doing here you know can you guess what it is i think it's one bit as i'm just saying this live i'm plugging in the little usb adapter cable that you have there that goes into the usb in onto the system board and the remaining bit should be coming up just now no that's not it what i'm doing now is i'm showing you the parts so i've got no idea what to do because there's no instruction and so about that little bit of a mistake what we did here i'm talking over the recording that i've set up so this is the remaining part this is the cooling fan that sits on top of the pillars that you screwed into so this is the male to female pillars that you screwed into the female to female pillars this sits directly on top and you can then screw those in note i had to use a different screwdriver for this i had to get one from my iFixit toolkit because the screws on top here you know were non-standard and didn't fit in properly for me so that wasn't a problem you know just make sure you've got a, a wide set of tools available for you because you, you i had to use as i say a different head to the ones that i had for the four sockets i was screwing in just plugging in the fan power at the moment before we, we we screw the fan into place and then we are nearly there so pop the screws in have a little adapter turn those and we, we should be there very very quickly So just to reiterate that I paid no money for this. This was from my own money. This is not sponsorship or anything else like this. So we've now got the Amiga keyboard. And note the pin orientation. You've basically got four pins, a blank, then three pins here. Plug it in correctly. Otherwise, you'll have a new problem beyond the power. And I'm trying not to drop the keyboard as I'm being completely cack-handed in doing this. And re-plugging in the Ethernet cable just so that I have a nice snug fit for everything else. So keyboard will be hooked into the little latches on the bottom of the device 
and we're ready to power on. To fix the power situation, I put that white adapter that you can see there, so I've got a rocker on off switch and you can see it powering on and it's absolutely working now. So that is great, that is fantastic, but I should not have to have been in that position, but I was lucky. I was lucky that that power switch broke with it on, otherwise that board would have had to have been going back because I could have desoldered it myself and redone it, but I didn't have the replacement parts. And finally remember or finally see what that part is for there. Look on the bottom left hand side, you've got a little round disc with a screw that you screw in to make the already very secure expansion port for the HDMI and the Ethernet more secure. Overall, did I enjoy building this? No. I would have liked a set of instructions so I could follow. Was it hard to build? No, but everybody has a different ability. So my review for this, you know, for packaging, it gets one out of 10 gentlemen. Your packaging was absolutely shit. Design, you get seven out of 10 gentlemen. That power switch really, really needs moving in my opinion. That is not a clever design to have it on the edge. Instructions, you get zero gentlemen. Come on, absolutely piss poor give some instructions with this kind of thing. But overall, you get eight out of 10 gentlemen. That's a picture of it on above. And this has been absolutely fantastic to use. You have let yourself down on the packaging totally. You've let yourself down a little bit on that design. If you'd fixed the packaging, you know what? I wouldn't be bringing up the design, but they are hand in hand. Your instructions, you completely drop the ball on that. But overall, when this is up and run, this is a fantastic, brilliant product. To use the, the Amiga in this way, where you've got the Mr. FPJ inside it using this I.O. board, is an absolute dream come true. It feels great. It feels natural. It feels fluid. So please, if you tidy up the packaging, the design, if you rework, you, you need to change that. Put some bloody instructions in. It's not hard. It's a single print out you can do. You've gone to all the effort of print great 3D parts where I know you had to do some of those by hand by inserting the the uh, the, the, nut, the nut pieces for this and you will have a top-notch product. So overall, it also gets eight gentlemen because this is, in my opinion, exceptional value for money. The, you know, this was 110 euros, I believe it cost me. And you know there, there is no complaint on this price point for what it gives, for what it does. Anyway, hope you've enjoyed the video. I'm The Gentleman. This is The Gentleman's Pixel Club, and I'll see you soon. Goodbye. Would you like to play again?